Surprisingly, perhaps, pogonophobia has nothing to do with pogo sticks. It is, in fact, the morbid fear of beards. This thought, this juxtaposition of word and concept, struck me suddenly and vividly one gloomy London evening, when the constant rain against my window pane drummed out any coherent reason. That night, a glass of milk was both my friend and my confessor.
understand this watch, and we first need to understand the post-war horological landscape. Um, Omega, after the Second World War, preferred to remain conservative in its design. This is not that immediate period following the conflict. Why? Well, because although Omega got a sweet slice of that war booty, mm, war booty, it was always the pricier alternative to its long jeans cousin. As a result, Long Jeans outsold Omega during the war and installed itself more firmly in the consciousness of North American consumers, and choosing instead to produce evening watches with more unnecessary swag than Trinidad James. The post-war boom in consumerism meant that Omega watches found a sure clientele, so long as they provided a level of quality on par with their higher price tag. The Seamaster series, introduced in 1948, was meant to provide this, going up against Tudor and other working men's luxury watches, with some real quotations around that. Following from this, I guess the best way to understand the results of this market position would be through the lens of voice and exit. Um, economist Albert Hirschman elaborated in 1970 a theory of how individuals and societies interacted with meta-entities, whether they be corporations or governments. I mean, this kind of taking the Marxist concept of the dialectic to its logical conclusion. The theory posited that individuals would first attempt to voice their discontent, and should they not feel that they were being accommodated, they would seek an alternative or exit the existing arrangement taken in terms of Hirschman's concept of voice and exit, and how that might drive change, especially in consumer capitalism, we can easily see that because there was no pressure on Omega, the result was that the outward appearance of this watch is about as exciting as a 1988 Ford Topaz. <laughs>
Yes, it's the it's the bit in the middle, it's the flower in the middle that I don't mm. find convincing. Because it's the one thing that stays the same, whereas everything else as you walk around it seems to give this illusion of change. Yes. With different right angles mm. against each other, etc. I mean beyond that, I find that the greenness of the whole scene, the whole scape here, to be somewhat disconcerting. In the sense Isn't of, that a fleeting contrast mm. between well, the industrialism of this design and the natural environment? Yes, I suppose if you want to see it that way. I think rather green but I wasn't than thinking concrete. in terms of contrast. I was thinking in terms of uniformity. In the sense that I have control, because there's much more control here. Because I'm so close into all these, these, these changing elements. Whereas this all stays the yes. same and around about. And but as de Kooning always used to say, you maybe I could have a grapefruit there or I could have a tree that's there over there. You can't do that, can you, you see, by just standing here. No. Whereas if I walk around this, I can make any of it change. But the flower in the middle, of course, is the one thing that doesn't seem to change yes. because one knows what the flower shape is. Exactly. So it needs removing. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. It occurred to me that maybe the moles consider this to be some sort of mole temple. I think that's possible. Why are you drawing that? It's called Bullet from a Shooting Star. It's a it's an art installation. It's 186 meters of metal, reinforced steel, and it's 35 meters high. 900 different connections. I suppose what it does is it, it complements and reflects this industrial or post-industrial landscape. Okay, but why are you drawing it upside down? No, I'm drawing it the right way round. Uh, that's upside down from, from what's right in front of us. Yeah, but that's like saying, I'll draw your face upside down. But you wouldn't draw my face upside down, you would draw my face uh, the right way round. Why would you draw my face upside down? But you're saying that's like upside down. If I drew your face the right way round, your beard would be on top of your head. The right way round is with my beard at the bottom of my head.
I'm a big fat hipster.